I'm going to talk about the future of Madagascar oceans and uh, coasts. We all know that Madagascar is one of the hottest of the hottest in terms of the worldwide hotspot biodiversity. And it has an unparalleled level of endemism. But how many of us know about Madagascar's precious marine heritage? We are a nation surrounded by and dependent on an incredible ocean. And we are living with the sea. And um, this is vital, absolutely vital, to our cultural identity and our economy and future. And as important as every bit of forest, but often out of mind and out of sight. Under the waves, Madagascar has an important and fundamental ecosystem with nearly 6,000 coastline, 6,000 kilometers of coastline. We, are, we have the most, one of the largest coral reefs in the world and mangrove forest and seagrass meadows. And we also have huge fisheries on which thousands, hundreds and thousands of our people are dependent in terms of survival and livelihoods. But this amazing environment is under pressure from land, from sea, and from air. From air. So it doesn't only threaten our biodiversity, it also threatens the lives of thousands of people, of our most vulnerable people. Like my friend Toma in the southwest of Madagascar and his family. My Vesu friend Toma, exactly. So how does our future look like? How does the future of our oceans look like? We all know that conservation is essential to safeguarding the future of our oceans and coast. And science tells us we need to protect 30% of our coral reefs, of our mangroves, and of our seagrass meadows. And um, with 30% protected, we will help this ecosystem resist the threat that we present to them every day. Unfortunately, for now, less than 1% of this ecosystem is protected with a handful of parks. So how are we going to get around this? How are we going to do this when there is not enough funding for conservation? Or when there is funding, it goes to short projects which always come to an end. We need to find a way around this and try to conserve our oceans at scale. My work as a social entrepreneur is to find and look for business-based solutions to, to these challenges. Because when conservation is rooted to market, the solutions that we are proposing are not only sustainable, they are also scalable. Through markets, we can improve these solutions and grow them to the scale of the problem. So maybe one day we will achieve this goal of 30% conservation. Well, um, let's take tourism, for example. This is Felunjak, the largest community-based marine protected area in the Western Indian Ocean. And it's just located in the southwest, um, south of Murumbi. For the past 10 years, conservation at this site has been founded by an ecotourism business, which brings up to 10,000 ecotourists every year per night. And with this um, amount of funding, we can help the community conserve like 40 villages, coastal villages, in the southwest of Madagascar. And this is like an incredible example of how conservation and business can align their goals. And what about fishermen who depend heavily on the resources for their survival. Well, let's take agriculture, sea cucumber agriculture, for example. Like sea cucumber, 
is sold for up to 300 US dollars per kilo in the Asian market, where it's highly valued as a aphrodisiac. And in the southwest Madagascar, of, in the southwest of Madagascar, local population have harvested these resources, which is nearest to extinction in the, West, in the Indian Ocean. So we're helping these communities farm these resources, which has a very high value in the market. So with this help, we can reduce the pressure on resources, and they, not, they do not need to fish so heavily. And what is the most, maybe the most exciting of all is after developing these 10 years of conservation area, we can see that conservation can be profitable to fishermen. So another example is octopus fisheries. Since 2003, like population in the southwest has closed, like the fishery, clo the octopus fishery, the octopus fishery for six months, like every year. And with, it, with this closure, we can actually see that the, the amount that fishermen are catching are increasing every year. And they have been so successful that they've been replicated like 150 times around the country. And even just last week, our neighboring island of Mauritian island of Rodrigues has adopted this approach. They drew inspiration from Madagascar, where fishermen are showing real leadership at the regional level on this approach. So it seems that there is actually some hopes for coral reefs, but what about other ecosystem, for example, mangroves? Mangroves are marine forests that are, most, are among the most threatened like in the world types of, in types of forest. And they are so important for fisheries, for protecting the coast, and for timber harvest. So we are in the north of Madagascar trying to explore the potential for carbon market via mangroves, so blue carbon then. So with this funding that we're trying to find through this approach will help the communities conserve the mangrove forest. So how are we going to do this? Well, actually mangroves is among the most powerful in terms of grabbing CO2 in the atmosphere. Actually, even like more, 10 times more powerful than rainforest. It's, of course, still very theoretical at the moment, but with the right science and the policy framework, we can actually develop blue carbon so we can help the communities find a very powerful business incentive to fund conservation by themselves. So then, how are we doing towards the sacred, protecting the sacred 30%? Well, you can see with this map, these are the community marine areas that have been set up for the last 10 years. This is incredibly encouraging because they're spreading around Madagascar and they're community-based, not depending on funding, not depending on the government, but by the communities themselves. So, which means we've come a very long way, actually. But still, this is a small slice of Madagascar oceans, and uh, we have still lots of work, bunch of work to do, which is ahead of us. So, what do we need to do? Like, how are we going to conclude this? So, the future of our oceans, actually, is to expand this business-based approach so we can grow and accelerate them, their expansion and, and through that, we can help community keep benefiting from conservation. So what is the main purpose of that? So the main purpose of that is really to have our future generations being able to enjoy Madagascar, merry life. Thank you very much.